everybody. Welcome to Mobility. My name is Dr. T. My name is Dr. Mark Bubbs, and uh, the title of our program is Mobility. As Dr. T said there, mobility is combining movement with mobility. Um, and we're going to, over the course of the next few weeks, few months, we're going to start to really delve into how these parameters actually impact uh, your health, uh, how you move in terms of exercise, and your overall well-being. And one of the big thing is is mobility is a little bit different because one of the key things that we really both are passionate about is that we believe that if you move better, you think better, you think better, you feel better, and you feel better, you become better. So we really want to be able to transcend exercise. We want to be able to talk about every other aspect of our psychology that also helps us to be able to be a better individual. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many connections between movement and overall health. And we talked uh, just a minute ago about the hormonal connections. So, you know, as you move better or incorporate more movement into your life, you, your capacity to cope with blood sugars is improved. So your blood sugar hormone insulin sensitivity becomes better. You become more efficient at handling um, blood sugars, carbohydrates, etc., which is not only better for your waistline, but better for your overall health. You also get improvements in testosterone levels, which is not only important for lean muscle mass and, and libido and things like that, but also for improving your cardiovascular health and, and mood and cognition. Absolutely, and I think the big thing is is that these are easy enough that, that once you get the proper uh, ranges, then you'll be able to apply it throughout the day, right? Because one of the things that is like really coming down the pipeline is that we should not treat our body in a sort of a binary way that, that you know, we, we sit, you know, we have a stillness for six or eight hours and then and we go and then we do exercises, right? So it's much better to have a, a default set of movements that we constantly are using, right? Which helps us, you know, with the whole spectrum of, of, of uh, issues that I think most of us are, are struggling with in an urban setting. Absolutely, and I think, you know, like you said, it really comes from, a, it's, it's an integrative and holistic approach. So if you think about uh, certain movements, um, you know, when we're young and when we're infants, um, having a, a 15 month old at home, I, can, I see this every day, if you have a group of infants together, they, they, they move and their ability to get into a, a deep squat is all virtually the same, whereas if we took a group of 20 or 30 adults into a room, we'd have 20 or 30 different movements. So as we age and as we get older, we're, we're losing this capacity to move optimally um, and to move well. So we've got to try to restore that. And, in a sense of movement and play rather than just thinking sets, reps, exercise, going to the gym, that type of thing, right? And I think that's a crucial component is that we want you to guys to have a sense of play. We want you to have a curiosity about the movement and also realize that it should not be a chore. We want you to be able to, again, uh, try to be able to, to aim for a subtle improvements, right? Not perfection because I think so much of pressure exists that we need to do things perfectly and I think a lot of times when we don't then it causes us to become more anxious and we become more angry, right? So this is something that is an ongoing process and, and, and hopefully we'll be able to again to 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 give you a roadmap to get that. Absolutely. I mean it's definitely a journey for for all of us, yourself right. and myself included, in terms of um, tweaking and then and, and being able to to get into areas of the body that have discomfort or pain. Yeah. Um, so for all of us, it's a journey. And having that idea that we're just upgrading or bettering um, not only the movement, but also it's going to be the health, the cognition. Uh, we chatted a minute ago about uh, breath, the importance mm -hmm. of, of breath on, uh, on movement, core stability, uh, cognitive function. Absolutely. So all these things are really intimately connected. So if we start to, to implement things that can impact all of these areas, then uh, in terms of health and wellness, things improve uh, rather quickly. And I think one of the other things is, is that uh, we both are clinicians and uh, we also want to be able to again use that experience to see what has worked for our, our patients, right? You know, and I think a lot of times, you know, research is fantastic, but it really doesn't translate well when it comes to patient care, right? And there's other things that, you know, we have picked up on that has really also been beneficial. So we want to really have that nice little balance between research, you know, evidence and what we see like, you know, clinically and I think that uh, it's going to be fun and it's a part of a learning process for us as well, right? Absolutely, yeah, there's definitely that art and practice of, of medicine so that you can have all the evidence and clinical studies that you like, mm -hmm. um, which is a foundation, but there's a different skill and a different art that happens to actually treating patients and being able to incorporate um, protocols or movements or changes in their lifestyle uh, 
because it's, it's, it's easy to take a pill for something, but it's tough yeah. to actually get someone to make a, a habit change or to incorporate something into their, their day-to-day life. Now, the flip side is if you can actually do that, then the, um, the magnitude of benefit increases dramatically. Right? So that's what we're going to try to uh, achieve if we go forward. And also, I think we're going to sort of show you that, that some of the uh, myths that are out there, right? Because I feel like not all standing is equal, not all sitting is equal, not all walking is equal, right? So if you be able to make some subtle changes, then you're going to see that, what well, it has a dramatic benefit, right? So you really don't need to do a whole lot. I think sometimes like, people just become overwhelmed by it, right? And like, wow, well, I should join a gym and do a whole bunch of other stuff. But we are having a little bit different approach. There's enough of that stuff out there, right? So we want to be able to tell you that, okay, let's try to be uh, efficient. Let's try to be able to, again, to make these subtle changes and, and then keep promoting it, right? So your nervous system, your body becomes used to it. Yeah, and I mean, even things as, as intricate as, you know, things like yoga classes are, are, are great for improving breath and mobility and flexibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for a lot of people, there's actually just certain poses that they really need to do more of, certain movements that they really benefit from. And a lot of the class, they may be doing movements that actually aren't so beneficial for them. We get into a lot of flexion extension, a lot of sagittal plane, front and back movements that we spend most of our daily lives in. Um, so as a part of this, even just figuring out the areas that are the blocks, that are the, the roadblocks for that person, because then it really becomes into personalizing. Uh, you know, if you are someone who does um, stretching or yoga work, identifying the actual positions or poses or movements that are, are most beneficial for you is, is, is so, so important. So that'll be something that will come along as we, as we go. And same with gym goers as well, the idea of creating that muscular balance so that, you know, top to bottom in the body, things are, um, stable, mm-hmm. uh, there's flexibility, there's mobility, uh, all the things that we need, stability, in order to uh, to achieve that. So it really becomes a, a person-to-person specific. So. And the other thing is, is like this is a passion project for us, so we promise to become better at this, right, as we go through. And, and the other thing is like we, we, we are doing these movements with you guys as well, right? And I think the other thing is that we also want to respect that, that there are some anatomical restrictions, there are some yeah. physiological restrictions. Sometimes you just have junky tissue, sometimes you see nobody takes a little time, right? So for us to be able to talk about those as well, that it's not just about a static component of something, but also more of a histological, an in-depth, sort of a nuanced way of looking at the body and looking in terms of what that movement is doing. Absolutely, it becomes really interesting too because we have uh, you know more athletic populations where you've done a repetitive motions all the time. So you know over the years that you can actually that can create limitations mm-hmm. for a lot of the optimal movements. Um, and you have people who are a bit more sedentary, so sometimes they are a little bit uh, less inclined or, or have a little bit more fear about diving into these things. But sometimes their movement patterns can be you know even better because there aren't these types of limitations. So you, depending on where you come from, whatever end of the spectrum, there's going to be roadblocks, but there's going to be benefits as well. So it's all about figuring out. Um, the best um, scenario for yourself and the best protocol. So we're going to be fully engaged with you guys along the way. Um, and again, this as an integrative approach, we want mm-hmm. if you integrate these movements and then some of the things that we're going to be walking you through, we want it to then influence the other areas of, of your health and it, and certainly will do in terms of and, you know, hormonal health, cognitive health, mm-hmm. immunity, energy, all these types of things. Absolutely, and I think the other thing is, is like one thing is that we both are, are attending a lot of different seminars, so and then we'll be able to again to introduce you in terms of what we're learning, right, and then be able to go through that. And uh, this is going to be exciting, and, um, Fabulous. and please join us. This is going to be a tribe, this is going to be a community, and we're going to have different people like, you know, that are going to uh, help us, you know, with this, with, this, with this process, right? And remember, it is all about becoming better. You know, so this is this is what our aim is, right? Absolutely looking forward to it.